How was that? <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I uh, I knew that the show had started because of that. Yeah, I have nothing, nothing to add. What I love is getting paid my entire salary to open shows like this because <laughs> it's actually pretty easy to be an adult if you if you if you you get a couple of lucky breaks that allow you to just grunt into a microphone and then groggily read Ben Shapiro's terrible book for an hour and a half to your friends, which is the career path I recommend for everyone listening. Mm -hmm. It's amazing uh, uh, what success is defined as these days. I know. But I, I accept know. it. Yeah, I accept it too. Um, how, are we, how, are we, how are we all doing today on this special, very special day? Uh, it's Friday. It's beautiful. I've got a dog in my lap. I apologize. I have a dog in my lap. He might be... There's two dogs in here. They might be joining in the conversation. We'll see. No, I'm good. I, I'm I'm glad you have the dogs, Katie, because today is in a, a day where we're going to all get some emotional closure. Yeah. And like, you know, we're all we're all readers here. You know, we're all fans of mm -hmm. storytelling. Mm -hmm. When you finish a story that has really grabbed you, it, it's like it can be like losing a family member. Like mm -hmm. a little yeah. bit like it's, yeah. there, there's this. This moment of sorrow when you realize it's gone, and we are about to take our very last trip into the world of Ben Shapiro's True Allegiance. Mm. I don't know if I'm emotionally prepared for this. We started this journey like a full year ago, y'all. It was a long time. Yeah, it was a while. Like, it's been a while. <laughs> I mean, by the we, time we're done, he'll have released uh, Truer Allegiance. <laughs> True, right? True Which Allegiance. Which I just can't wait for. You know I love a series of books. You know, I've mm -hmm. been, I've been, I've, I, 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 I run one of the largest subreddits for, for True Allegiance fans. Mm -hmm. And the <laughs> big, the scuttlebutt is that the sequel, we're finally going to learn Yard's name. Ooh, I'm hooked. I mean, fingers crossed. <laughs> fingers Won't crossed. Hold my breath. I don't know. We might save that for the third one. <laughs> a, well, we know. are going to have to come up with something else to read because I'm not ready to say goodbye to this tradition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, we'll have to find another book. Maybe Steven Seagal's book, <laughs> The Way of the Shadow Wolves. <laughs> oh my that God. That's fun. Yeah, sold. Uh, you had a visceral reaction to that title. And speaking of visceral reactions, the first chapter that we're coming back to Ooh. is we couldn't open this episode better. Brett Hawthorne. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. We're in New York City with Brett. Brett couldn't stop sweating. It wasn't that Prescott. Prescott is the, the terrible president. Prescott's threat scared him. Not after the public scandal with Diana Kelly. Bullshit, though it was. Not after Afghanistan. Not after Iran. Not after spending years apart from Ellen. Prescott would be better off burying the whole situation politically, avoiding the backlash, making some payoff to Omari, which is the bin Laden. This would blow over. Brett wasn't sweating for himself. He was sweating for Hassan. He'd been a fool. He knew that now. He'd been a fool far too often, trusting Prescott, serving in his administration, and then telling Omari that he knew about Mohammed's association with him. Omari could backtrack the story. Okay, so Brett's, Brett's feeling bad because he got his friend, the good Muslim, in mm -hmm. trouble for telling him about the bad Muslim who is like running care, basically. Mm. Like, we all remember that. There's, there's, there's the, the Do anti- we <laughs> There's the anti-Muslim bigotry organization that yes, is a front yes. for Al Qaeda, um, it, because all of the Muslims except for his friend Hassan are bad guys. Um, and Brett got his friend in trouble because his friend sent him to the anti-Muslim bigotry people who nuked New York City. Because the only reason to be against bigotry against Muslims is if you're planning to destroy the largest city in the country. Yeah, that's basic. I can't think of any other logical region. Yeah, yeah, okay. So he's wondering how Prescott tracked him down, yada, yada, because he got caught by the president and the feds last episode, or last chapter, whatever you want to fucking call these things. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's in his hotel room, he's in trouble, he's worried about his friend, he picks up his phone and he dials Hassan's number. Hassan picks up on the first ring. General Hawthorne, he said. Brett picked up the cue right away. Hassan knew they were listening. Hassan Abdul, I've heard so much about you. A mutual friend of ours referred me to you. He said you could answer some questions about Quranic philosophy for an article I'm writing about my experiences in Afghanistan and Iran. Okay, so he's they're doing like the the the, the coy thing because he doesn't want uh, to give anything away over the phone because he's being tapped. Yada yada yada. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's let's let's. Where, where, where's our good Brett Hawthorne action here? Come on. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's getting to climate. Like we're getting. Come on. Okay, so he gives Hassan his address, and Hassan comes over, and that's how they're that's how they're going to have a real conversation. Brett puts on Joy Behar to drown out whatever listening devices are in the room. 
Um, nice detail. Is Ben a big Joy Behar fan? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. Couldn't be. No. Um, okay. So, uh, da, 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 da. Um, so they have 20 minutes of phony discussion about the Quran. Um, we still don't know what Brett's actually trying to do. Okay, so this whole conversation they've had is just so that Brett can set up another secret meeting where they're going to actually have the real conversation. Which okay. Is good writing. We needed these last three pages where nothing really happened. Um, so now he winds up later back at Hassan's apartment, uh, sneaking past federal agents and stuff to have, I guess, the real meeting. When Hassan let him in, he immediately held up a piece of paper to his chest. They stopped here today, it said. The tapes are gone. Brett's face went white, so they'd known all along, and then they'd waited for Hassan to leave the apartment to ransack it. Son of a bitch, he whispered to himself. Mm -hmm. Then he read the rest of what Hassan had written. Found your Muhammad, it read. Flatbush. Below it, an address. So that's the terrorist who's in the country to set off another bomb, I guess. He could have just said, uh, uh, this is like nitpicking. We're getting yeah, to the nitpicky stage. We uh, are, just, we are. Just, just right. He read the rest. <laughs> He read the you know, rest. Not, yeah, I would push back and say that's not nitpicky. It's yeah. an overall note. Yeah, yeah. You don't even say he read the rest of what this person wrote. Like we, we know that. You know, so far, it, it this has been like not written it like four pages it, that could have been like three paragraphs where he's yeah. like, yeah, we exchanged coded messages until we could actually meet and overall note. You yeah. need a redundancy edit. Yeah, you need a redundancy exactly. edit. I mean, that's the thing when you're when you're writing a piece of fiction. You write it, right? And the first draft is always going to be trash. Everybody's yes. first draft is bad. You don't publish that one, no, Ben. It, ben. <laughs> <laughs> and then your goal should be to go through a few more times and, and make it shorter. Every time it should get a little shorter because you're recognizing, for example, that you wrote four unnecessary pages that don't convey any useful information about the progression of the story. Um, but I don't know. Just, just a note. Just a note. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um... Yeah, so he has to escape from Hassan's apartment. He's dodging federal agents. We have an action scene, I guess, where it takes way too long. Pages and pages of him just running away from guys and hiding. Um, ben, I was hoping for more fun combat, General Brett Hawthorne and stuff. But okay, so the agents catch him. He gets he's he finally after three pages of of very boring running away. He's on the subway platform. The agents catch him. General, shouted one of the agents. Just come with us. You know we have our orders. Brett breathed heavily, bent down, and put his hands on his knees. He held one finger to them. All right, just catching my breath, guys. And then looked up at them as the noise of the ap approaching subway train grew. He, gra he counted down in his head. He could see the lights approaching down. Oh, I think he's going to jump on the train. Um, oh, yeah, okay. he, uh, yeah, he jumps on the train. Um, and he, he successfully uh, runs away from the uh, uh, the federal agents. Um, oh, wait, no, no, he doesn't. They, they run after him. So we're, we're running again. We're running again. We're running again. This is so many pages of just Brett Hawthorne trying to avoid federal agents. Um, okay, so he, he gets away. He, he comes out into New York City. He's walking around Prospect Park. He's looking for this Mohammed guy. He finds his apartment. Uh, he had almost no chance of avoiding detection if Muhammad was listening, he knew. The complex, the apartment complex Muhammad's in, just wasn't big enough, heavily trafficked enough, sure enough. A woman from 2B opened her door a crack to get a look at him. He glared at her, and he heard her shut the door and lock it. His hand felt in his pocket for a weapon he didn't have. Does he normally keep his weapons in his pockets? Mm, he's, yeah, he's a soldier. Is that I mean, he yeah. knew he doesn't have anything, but it's not like he reached down by his side where his, his trusty <laughs> sidearm was. Yeah. He doesn't keep like, his gun in his pocket. Search, like, yeah, it's like searching <laughs> all his like pockets for like, what do I got? What do yeah. I got? What do I got? <laughs> you grab some Where keys? are my, my loose yeah. blades? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay, some of us keep loose knives in our pockets. That's healthy. <laughs> um, eventually, you build up an immunity to getting cut. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's like strychnine. Um, okay. So he find, he gets into Muhammad's apartment, but Muhammad has been murdered already. He's had his throat cut. So oh. I don't know. There's some fucking terrorism shit going on here. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and Brett has arrived just in time to almost catch the assailant. Um, okay. So we have an action, another action scene here. Um, he gets attacked by the guys who just killed this terrorist. Um, and he fights them off. Uh, well, he's in the process of fighting them off. Um there's another boring action scene, uh, and he succeeds in 
beating up the guys who killed the other guy and taking them captive. Um, so yeah, he gets puts a knight to one of their throats, and he's he's about to torture one of these guys for information. That's that's where we're leading. And the last right. pa- we paragraph of Brett's chapter is a few minutes later, after subduing Mahmoud, who's the guy he is about to torture. Brett dialed Ellen. Honey, he said, don't come to New York. I can't stay for certain yet. Just don't come to New York. Something bad is... Okay, so you remember three chapters ago when Ellen called him because she was about to fly to New York on behalf of the governor and she gets a call from Brett telling her not to? This is apparently happening contemporaneously to what happened three chapters ago. That's why Brett was telling her not to... Oh, okay. So now we're back at that part. Well, because good yeah. writing, Clever you want to be continuously building, but also continuously going back in time in order to build again yeah. so that there's, it's es- like a zigzag. Especially, mm-hmm. especially if that is um, a, a stylistic choice that ha- has not been introduced earlier in the novel. Yeah, you need I to mean, make it as not clear as possible. Has it? I mean, I has say, it? Has he d- <laughs> I will say one thing that has been introduced in this book so far is that Brett will change perspectives and shift time periods at random. Sure. Ben, sorry, not Brett. So there is that. Um, so, so yes, Ben, Brett, whomever. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, joke's on me for not paying close enough attention. All right, I'm going to skim more of this next bit because this is just... Terrible. The joke's on us for reading this. But. The joke is on us for reading this. So our next chapter is an Ellen chapter. And I guess we're finally moving forward in time from where Ellen was three chapters ago before Brett's chapter took us back in time. Um, good. So Brett's been missing for more than 24 hours. Nobody knows where he is. Um, she's waiting for an audience with the president. She's in New York City. So apparently she flew to New York City. We didn't, okay. She did it didn't anyway. get explained to us. Yeah. Um, um, oh. um, you know, I'm okay with that. Because if if he did if he did a bit where he like wrote about her going there, I'd be like, Ben, we don't need this. That's Cut fair. This Although, <laughs> Cody, the next page or so is Ben going back in time and explaining why she decided to go to New York, even All though right, Brett warned her not to. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, All right. All right. So we have a little bit about how she expected it to be chaotic in the wake of the terrorist attack, but the military has done a brilliant job of cleaning up the city and opening up traffic. So that's good. Um, Okay. Uh, There's a great line here. The dredging of the uh, traffic clogged the main arteries. The dredging of the Hudson had just come about come to its conclusion, although the Coast Guard still patrolled the waters in heavy numbers. Military men and women seemed to throng throughout the city, occupying every coffee house, every restaurant. This, she thought, must have been what World War II felt like. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm, couldn't agree more. <laughs> she expresses that it's calming having armed women and men everywhere, which if they're mm-hmm. in coffee houses and restaurants, like the military doesn't just let you keep guns uh, when you're off duty. Like maybe if you were at like a fob in Afghanistan, yeah, you'd always want to have a gun near you. But like these guys were sent to a city to assist in a rescue operation. They're probably not carrying guns as a rule because they're doing recovery work. They wouldn't have guns. The, the army's not going to be like, yeah, we'll take your, it's, we're in I'm New York. Take your gun got... to get coffee. <laughs> huh. I'm shocked he got this so wrong. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, <clears throat> hmm. it's just been wanting to do his, you know, masturbating over the military thing. Yeah. Aren't things better when everybody has yeah, guns? Exactly. Aren't things better when the army? Yeah, we I, love to feel comfortable when everybody's got guns and occupying. It's fine. Well, it's one of those things. We feel safe when everyone has guns. Obviously. I, I, you know, I spend a lot of time around places where everybody has guns, but I, I don't feel particularly comfortable when there's a bunch of armed soldiers everywhere in the middle of a city. That's not a, a great yeah. sign. Particu- <laughs> that's a particularly bad sign. It's weird because Ben's supposed to be like this kind of libertarian conservative, but the thing he's celebrating isn't like a bunch of armed citizens. It's like a military occupying the largest city in the nation, which isn't a small government thing, but I guess yeah, conservatism left that behind a while ago. Yeah. Also, she, she, she feels safer in midtown Manhattan in the immediate wake of a terrorist attack with soldiers everywhere than she felt in El Paso, famous for being one of the safest large cities in the United States. <laughs> Which Ben continuously forgets. He just thinks it's got to be like a dangerous hellhole because it's close to the border. El Paso was like a famously safe city. <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't want to know that. Unless. No. What Unless. Really yes, but safe? what if in this book it uh-huh. isn't? Yeah, I mean, it, it clearly isn't because the government has declared war on Mexico <laughs> and has invaded from El Paso. Um <laughs> 
But El Paso is number six in the top uh, 10 safest metro cities uh, in the United States. Um, New York. Uh, well, no, New York is too. OK. Really? So, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's gotten it's 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 pretty safe, pretty safe town. So there you go. I guess. Fair enough, Ben. Um, although it's weird that she feels extra safe in the wake of a terrorist attack that killed thousands there. Um, yeah. But whatever. All right. So she's she calls Ben's friend, the special forces general who sent him on this quest in the first place and yada, yada, yada. She calls somebody else. She's just she's doing a lot of phone calls. She's walking around New York phone calling people like a reverse episode of Seinfeld. Um Okay, now she's buying a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> this so is we thrilling. Get, we get about a page or so of her talking to a sandwich vendor about how the president's angry at her husband. Um, I don't know if that's information she should just be sharing with people on the street. Yeah, given it what's been going on, I don't know. I don't oh, wait, know. No, they're both eating a sandwich together. She's some. He's some source of his. I, in any case, it's very boring. Um, <laughs> she, yeah, she's just meeting with people, meeting with people, talking to folks. Honestly, no wonder um, Brett's never at home. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, Ooh. Jesus Christ, I wouldn't be. She finally, after several pages of very boring conversations, finds the uh, the place that uh, uh, her husband fought those guys and found the murder dude. Uh, and I think she, let's see. Oh yeah, no. She finds so the 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 assassin that her president fought or that her her husband fought. Uh, he apparently murdered, uh, and he's been sitting in the apartment ever since. And yeah, so she's 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 following in the wake of her husband's murder spree. I guess. Cute. Uh, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's a meat cute. Okay, so okay, she finally gets she finally gets set up with her meeting with the president that she's supposed to take on behalf of the governor of Texas who has invaded Mexico. Prescott finally caught Ellen that night. They met at a conference room in the hotel. Prescott sat at one end of the long conference table with Tommy Bradley at his elbow. They placed her at the opposite end. She felt like a little girl called into the principal's office, but realizing that's exactly how Prescott wanted it, she steeled herself for the confrontation. That's a bad sentence. But realizing that's exactly how Prescott wanted it, comma, she steeled herself for the confrontation. No, Ben. That's no, Ben. She was surprised when Prescott grinned at her. Have you seen your husband yet, Miss Hawthorne? That little riposte, Ellen quickly figured, meant they were tailing her. Not yet, Mr. President, she said. In fact, I'm not quite sure where he is. She figured Prescott must already know that. Otherwise, he wouldn't have asked. He knew better than to ask questions to which he didn't know the answers. Wait, what? Mm. But he uh, just did. He did. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so they're having a conversation about coming to an agreement on border security because, again, her boss has illegally invaded a sovereign nation. Right, right. They, mm -hmm. they determine that they're at an impasse. Uh, okay. The president leans forward, a sudden seriousness coming over his face. I'm sure you can do better than that. Look, see from my perspective, we just faced the most serious terror attack in our nation's history. All I'm trying to do is rebuild. All I need is some time, some calm in the country. You've seen the situation in Detroit. The world's on fire. Whose fault is that, Mr. President? What did you just say? I said it's your fault, Mr. President. Ellen couldn't Ooh. back. Oh, okay. Truth to I power. <laughs> I guess I guess he caused he he caused all this by not bombing Iran. Mm -hmm. Is what she's saying, or mm -hmm. having uh, all of the Black Lives Matter activists massacred? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's why the world's not enough burning. violence. Yeah, yeah, not enough violence. We need to listen to the women more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, so the president offers. Uh, oh, okay, so the president has Brett. Apparently, he got captured, and after this point, and it after like they decide they can't come to an agreement on the border, he brings Brett in. Um, two Secret Service agents ushered in General Brett Hawthorne. His face was bruised. His clothes were filthy. He looked awful. His hands were gashed and scraped. His knuckles bloody. For a moment, Ellen felt miles away. Her husband blurred through her tears. What? Okay. She ran, <laughs> she ran to him, throwing her arms around his neck. He stood there awkwardly, then raised his hands to her head, stroked his ear, she, uh, her hair. She breathed in the smell of him, the wonder of him. And then he uh, saw Prescott's smiling yeah. face and came back to earth. She kissed his cheek. What did they do to you? She whispered. He gently pushed her back. Then he turned to the president, his hands open, pleading. Mr. President, he said, you need to call M.M. Omari right now and get some answers. And why is that, General? We've had this conversation before. Okay, so Brett spent his days tracking down leads. There's a terrorist attack. 
Uh, he's he, he's warning the president there's about to be a nuclear attack on American soil. I've seen this strategy before in Afghanistan. They draw you in with one bomb, then use a second to kill those who help. I think what happened at the bridge was the preliminary attack. Prescott paused. He stroked his chin thoughtfully. Then he said slowly, I don't believe you. You already knew, Brett mused, enraged. So the president knows that there's about to be a nuclear attack, and I guess he's... Oh, no, okay. I did I did know, and I don't believe your intelligence is better than my CIA, my FBI, my Department of Homeland Security. I don't buy this Jack Bauer routine you're putting on. I think you've got delusions of grandeur and that you always did. Okay, so that was a deliberate 24 reference when he tortured that guy. That's nice That's to see. For them. Yeah. Okay, so the president, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it's just like, maybe yeah. it's because we've stretched this out over a year. It is. <laughs> but like, I'm just so not invested in what's going on. Or I could like, care less. Even, even aware, no. really, of like, what am I, what am I Because there's so many following? different plots, and they're all poorly laid out, and everything takes twice as long as it ought to. You're right, Cody, that it might be because we've stretched this out over the course of a year. Yeah. But- also, no, it's bad. It's it is. Both. It's terrible. It's a terrible. It's, there's a reason it's been stretched out. It's because it's awful. Yeah, we've yeah. got we've, we've been got putting it off a plot that doesn't make any sense um, because we've got both. There was the first bombing, which I guess was cover for the second bombing using mm-hmm. the nukes that Saddam had. Mm-hmm. But he hid in Afghanistan. Um, Unclear. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's also the evil Black Lives Matter group and their mm-hmm. scheme to replace all of the cops with black people, which is so far is what we've got of the scheme of the Black Lives Matter crew. Yeah. I, and fundamental yeah. misunderstanding, I think. Um, and then, of course, there's the attack on Mexico. Yeah. And then there's a, then there's an invasion of Mexico. Um, so that feels yeah. like a good place to to take an ad break. Yeah, yeah. You know who also would invade Mexico? These sponsors. Our sponsors. Uh, oh, yeah. No. yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. We're back and we're 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 just desperately trying to close out this book that we are now 90% of the way through. So, so close I can taste it. The president, okay, so we, we, we get to the president and, and them are having their talk about, you know, the, Brett's warning that there's a nuke that's going to be set off. The president doesn't believe him because he's got his intelligence. Um, yeah, uh, okay, so, um, and he basically threatens like, hey, we've got your husband around two different murders at this point, uh, and if we wanted to, we could have him convicted. And Alan asks why the president's doing this, and he says, because, Miss Hawthorne, your husband forced me into this. So did you. The president of the United States is not just a job. It's a high office. The president of the United States cannot look ridiculous. He can't have a two-bit jackass redneck governor spitting in his eye, and he can't have rogue generals portraying him as a weakling days after terrorists bro up the damn George Washington Bridge. So here's my offer. We all walk out of here as best friends. Ellen, you tell the press that we've reached an agreement and that the state of Texas will be removing its troops from the border. You apologize for the massacre in Mexico. And just so your boy Bubba has a fallback position, you can tell them that I've pledged to offer up the federal support on the border as soon as possible. As for you, General Hawthorne, you retire quietly back to Texas with your wife. You keep your damn mouth shut because I'm tired of hearing it. So that's the deal they're willing to reach. Um, I don't know if that's going to fly. Yeah, if that's his best comeback. You keep your damn mouth shut. Also, yeah. interesting. <laughs> you know, I can't have uh, these governors, you know, mouth and back to me. I can't have these reports. Every single president in the history of ever, there's people like you. you, you there's always going to be people talking about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and yes, it's sorry. It's, that's a minor it, point. Everything about this president. It um, just, is funnier based on how Ben went to bat for Donald Trump. Like everything yep. he said, he <laughs> writes about this guy is a lot funnier because the year after he published this book, he had to start defending D- President yeah. Donald Trump. Oh yeah, um, almost a, almost a month after the book was yeah, published, it's, it was it's like September. Funny. It was like the yeah. September before the election. <laughs> so um, that chapter ends with with Brett and Ellen deciding whether or not they're going to let America get nuked so they can retire in Texas. Um, and next chapter, uh, the end of the beginning. Uh, boy. Oh, here we go. Poetic. It's poetic. It's poetic. 
Mark Prescott had gotten his moment, but now the time had come for the next step, the actual launch of the Work Freedom Program, which is his, the president is a Nazi because he wants to give people jobs program. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, He'd spoken mm -hmm. with the Chinese government, and they had confirmed their prior commitment to purchase another massive round of debt. His advisors had warned him that too much leverage to the Chinese would place the nation's finances at peril, but his own economists told him differently. The Chinese, they assured him, could afford to take a financial hit even less than the United States. By tying the two economies together, in fact, President Prescott will be doing a service to the financial future of both countries. A little bit of, a little bit of China baiting there. Um, yeah, so he's, he's well, about to expected. announce his big new works program. He's going to do it with the military as a backdrop going to have all these soldiers that are in new york behind him so that conservatives can't yell at him because the army's there um preparations for the event had begun nearly a day in advance the military set up bleachers to hold thousands of troops from across the country prescott insisted that the most racially diverse troops be placed directly behind him for the cameras and all had them all pre-screened for their political sensibilities so that's okay uh yeah so da, da da he's getting ready for his big he's going to change America. And now we're back to Brett and Ellen who are sitting in the president's hotel trying to figure out what they're going to do. Uh da, da, da. they cry and cry and cry and they're talking about Brett bullshit. Cries. Brett is now explaining to her everything that we saw him do um in the previous chapters where they weren't together. So that's good. Um I'm glad that he can open up. <laughs> no. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah, Brett says that they can't do, he can't abandon things. They have to go about trying to stop this terrorist attack. They can't retire in Texas. Um, all right, now we're back to the president's big event. Everybody's waving signs. Uh, yada, yada. Uh, oh, no, no, this is Soledad. So Soledad is at the president's big event. I think she's about to do a terrorist attack. So she's... Oh, she's going to do a terrorism. She, she's she's wa slipping through the crowd. Ricky O'Sullivan, the cop who shot the dead-eyed black boy, is waiting in her car. Uh, I guess he's he's her real man. Um, oh, she's going to try to assassinate the president. Um, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Aiden's death had changed her, hardened her. She knew she could fob now, off the California water. From my recollection, wasn't Aiden? They didn't know each other that well. I mean, she had, he was the he was the 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 Fed the the SWAT cop guy yeah. who then got blown up by a drone. Yeah, strike. but she met him the day they escaped, right? Yeah, but he killed the rest of the SWAT team to help her escape. So they were sure, friends. sure. Yeah. But it seems like um. A wild way to end up. It's a wild path to end up to killing the president. Killing you know? the president. Yes. Yes. From I mean, the death of this person that she'd known for a short period. I, 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 look, I, I don't know. It's just a note. It's a I note. Know. Katie, why would you kill the president? Why would I kill the president? Yeah. What would know. make you kill the president? Let's all talk about yeah, killing speak the very, president. Very, very clearly like... into the microphone. Uh, what um, it why would it you take kill the president? for me to kill the president? Um, yeah, the president. The president. Uh, the United the States, president. president of the mur I mean, murder, killing the president of the United States. I think he would have to at least have been or the one she to jail. or she in this book. I'm right. Well, I mean, in this book, at yeah, the yeah, very yeah. least, had to or have been the one yeah. to kill yeah. the person. If I wanted to get specific revenge on that president, I don't know. I wish I had a funny answer. You took me off guard. <laughs> Everyone gets taken off guard when presidents get killed. That was the great lesson of the Zapruder film. You, the start of the film, everybody's having a good time. It's also it's a, I'm it's a fun then Bernie part. swoops in and, and then, just like and then disrupts Bernie everything. Sanders if this results day. in me getting arrested in some capacity, I'm not going to be happy about it. I mean, we do start every episode by saying that the threats against public figures that may appear in this episode are, in fact, legally actionable. Um, <laughs> oh, no, I didn't and, know and that. Shit, shit. And officially endorsed by iHeartRadio. And officially endorsed by iHeartRadio. <laughs> that was a call Sophie and I made years ago. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. a bad Great. one. In All right, no, then good well, stipulation. I've got, <laughs> no, make it very clear. I've got the iHeart team behind me. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. yes. iHeartRadio collaborators with Bernard Sanders and mm -hmm. with, okay. Um, Sophie's looking so <laughs> thrilled that we're saying these things. <laughs> Robert loves looping me in on a crime. I, I, you know, the best thing about crimes is getting other people involved, which exactly. is what Soledad understands. Oh, um, great pivot back. That was thank excellent, you. Robert. Thank you. Uh, so apparently she voted for Mark Prescott the first time um, because uh, his promises of a better America, a more caring America appealed to her. Then it turned out Caring was just a cover for control. Very subtle, Ben. Very subtle. Dig it. 
liberals. So, uh, yeah, she's 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 in this big crowd, but she's also thinking about what happened right after Ricky got killed by a drone. Um, so, yeah, they'd spent days hiding in the woods because everyone thinks that they're dead. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, OK, so she's explaining why Soledad. So we start with Soledad in the crowd and then we go back in time to after Aiden was killed for Ben to spend several pages explaining why she decided to kill the president. That's good. That's good writing, Ben. Um, we're just doing another time shift here. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I'm, fo- I'm following everything. Oh, this is great. Soledad felt the handgun in her purse. It was a 3D printed plastic gun. She'd bought it from a gun enthusiast in Ohio. He'd been a nutcase <laughs> obsessed with weaponry with an industrial grade printer in his garage. Prior 3D printed guns had been made with a few key pieces of metal to absorb the explosion of the gunpowder or bullet. But this guy had perfected a method of making specialized bullets with a thicker shell that could absorb the brunt of her... What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait a second. Uh, ben, that's not how guns work. So Yeah, right? <laughs> this is an all plastic gun, so it won't set off a metal detector, but it's not all plastic because the reason that the plastic gun works is that the bullets have extra thick metal shells. So there's no metal in the gun at all, just metal in the bullet, and as a result, it won't set off the metal detector. Okay. Uh-huh. I don't think he researched that. I mean, I guess she, she's unloaded it, so the bullet is elsewhere, and she's but just assuming it's fine. What's the point fine. of the unloaded gun? Anyway. Well, she's going to load it to kill the president, but I, she's she's assuming that the metal detector, number one, that in a place, like I've gone through Secret Service checkpoints, they don't just scan you for metal. They run it through a thing that lets them see what's in your bag. They would notice the gun-shaped thing. Yes. Um, also, 3D printed guns don't work that way, but why would I expect Ben to know about one of the things he... In this we world, don't, we don't, it does, it. We don't need guys. In this world, it does. It's just a dumb explanation. It's just a dumb explanation for how a 3D printed gun would work. Um, because that doesn't make any sense at all. That like the, the bullet's going to absorb, the metal shell of the bullet will absorb the explosion, but the, the bullet has to travel down a barrel. And a plastic rifled barrel is not, it's just not going to work very well. Okay. <laughs> Unless you write it down. He did write it down. Okay, so, whatever. Yeah. I guess fiction authors, you get you get a little thing like this, even though his explanation's dumb. I'll give it to him. Um, okay, so now we're back, back to Brett and Ellen. Soledad's got her gun. She's going to get close to the president and kill him. She'd have to get within a few dozen yards of the president. That's a long-range shot with a real pistol, Ben. Let alone a like, plastic one. Like, it's hard, it's hard for most people to hit. Like, if you're a good shot, 20, 30 feet away, maybe, you know? Um, you can you can hit reliably with an actual handgun from 20 or 30 feet away. A plastic gun with a plastic barrel, you'd have to get that, you would have to be at point blank range, right? Maybe then, if it's like the kind of thing where you're just going to shove it into their face and fire, you're not, you're not hitting anything with that gun from dozens <laughs> of yards away. <laughs> like, okay, Ben. So, thanks to the foot traffic at the heart. Now, now we're back to Brett and Ellen. They're sitting in a limousine, um, with the White House Chief of Staff. He keeps trying to talk to them. Um, Brett turns to Ellen. I need to go now, sweetheart. They won't let me go anywhere once we get to the airport. I need to get down to the harbor. But you listen to me. Whatever you do, you get on the plane with Prescott. I don't know whether this attack will come at the event or not, but I want you out of this city. I'm so sorry for this, Ellen. Uh-oh. I'm so sorry for everything. We could have had a life together. She looked mm. at him dead in the eyes. Brett Hawthorne, I want you to know this. You are my hero. Oh, God. Okay. I just can't even read the rest of that. Do and it. They do their- you have to say do it. Full you name. have to do it. Do full it. Name. Share the screen and one of us will read it. But she, she looked at him dead in the eyes. Brett Hawthorne, I want you to know this. You are my hero. You always were. I am so proud to be your wife. I wouldn't trade my life for anyone's. They felt the urge to kiss each other. Then they remembered Bradley in the car and hugged instead. Take a bullet for you, babe, he said. Take a bullet for you, sweetheart, she answered. I hate you. Oh, God. Okay. He wasn't it made read me that. nauseous. Why? He I know. Was it's going to deprive it was, our listeners of that. It, so it hurt me. Also, wait a minute. It hurt Just because me. someone's in the car doesn't mean you can't fucking kiss your wife. You. Yeah. What is this? What like, kind of weird kiss shaming is I this? Mean, you haven't seen her in so long and you haven't kissed her yet? Come on. Yeah, they're being watched by the Secret Service and the president's man, but like they know they're married. Uh-oh, like it's not like their relationship is a secret. Yeah. Like of all the things that are going to be a problem of the fact that they're he it's like, not like they're doing a quick fuck on the sidewalk. Yeah, Brett's Brett's planning to escape. Um like He's planning to flee and run away from the Secret Service. 
The fact that I don't he know. kisses I don't think his either wife of them isn't going to give it. anything away. Yeah, they're not Listeners, close. <laughs> you can't you can't see it, but Cody's face is horrifying. It's really funny. It's so <laughs> bad. It's it's. <laughs> I am convinced that Ben has never kissed his wife as a result of this because oh, someone might see. Of course not. Yeah, someone might see. What if what if somebody sees it? Yeah. They only kiss in the bedroom under the covers. Yeah. Under the they covers. They hug fully clothed under the covers. It's yeah, that's uh, I mean, I'm not gonna say that the father of Ben's children is a turkey baster, but I'm not gonna say it's not. Just based on this chapter. Statistically <laughs> so speaking, I, very possible. Why yeah. did like I know why. He thinks Brett Hawthorne is such a cool fucking name. He thinks he, he, does, he thinks Brett Hawthorne's an amazing name. It's yeah. unbelievable. It's like so embarrassing. <laughs> it's sad because this is who he desperately wants to be. Yeah. Um, and he's he's spent his life wanting to be an imaginary bear of a man who won't mm-hmm. kiss his wife before going to stop a nuclear attack. Um, cool ass name. Brett people, Hawthorne. They love, they love saying his full name too. They love saying his Brett his Hawthorne. Name. Brett Hawthorne. Okay. <laughs> so then Brett reach, pops open the lock and like jumps out into traffic in order to escape from the vehicle so the Secret Service can't find him. He sprints around the corner. He loses them. Um, there's not Secret Service agents on the running boards of the limousine like there always are on the president's <laughs> limo. Um, ever since Bernard Sanders, one cold mm. November day, changed mm. presidential security forever. Forever. Um, forever. Yeah. Uh, well, he knew he wanted to be the president one day, so he's like, "I want to feel really, really protected." So I gotta take. I gotta do this. So they up security. That's, that's the only reason it happened. Mm, yeah. yeah, that was that was the conspiracy. That was the yeah. motivation behind it. Secret Service was slacking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I'm president, they're not gonna. No, no, no. no. They're gonna protect me. Ta- limos with no top. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> Let me show you why. <laughs> yeah, the top, the top one percent of all cars. Mm-hmm. All right. I don't know. Something right. like that. Something, <laughs> something like that. Something like there's, that. There's a joke there. We'll figure it out one of these yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put it in post. So Brett's running around. He's he's looking to he's trying to stop this terrorist attack. Uh he sees um above the huge throng of people waiting for the president to speak, Imam Omari, who's giving an invocation. Um oh good. Uh so the president being evil has has a Muslim giving the invocation for this terrorist attack. Um there's polite ap- applause. Um, the imam takes a seat, yada, yada, yada. Brett gets, is almost at the stage. He's close to the stage. The president's playing videos of, of, of soldiers doing relief work and helping after the disaster. The crowd's very, the crowd roars its approval. It made Brett queasy. There were no pictures of the fallen in Afghanistan or Iraq. No pictures of the bomb going off under the bridge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No um, yeah, it makes sense that you would have pictures of dead men in Iraq. Uh, yeah. At a vigil See, for a terrorist attack thing, in New York. <laughs> the thing, Brett, that would make other people queasy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess the I, point I, that Brett that is I, making but... is that all of the men who died in Iraq and Afghanistan were trying to prevent this attack on New York. Yes. Which is why we, we had to get Saddam's WMDs that are now back in America because we invaded Iraq. The point yeah. he's making here is confusing. <laughs> Because we went to war with these countries because Saddam had these weapons and they still wound up over here, maybe suggesting that the war was a bad idea. But Ben doesn't stop to think about that. Um, So the president starts a speech. My fellow Americans, we stand strong. We stand together. Yada, yada. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, He's. uh, Oh, okay. The president announces that he's authorized his air force to strike Syria. (laughs) What? (laughs) That's what Brett asks. What the hell is in Syria? Prescott continued. Our intelligence tells us that this vicious terror attack was masterminded in that war torn country. We felt the brunt of their rage and we took their and they took their best shot. Now they will take ours. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's attacking Syria. Um, over this attack that was using Saddam's weapons from Iran. All right, okay, and he announces okay. the start of the Work Freedom Program. Um, <laughs> and he gives he gives a speech. He gives a speech. Um, Brett notices a couple of federal agents in the crowd. Um, the speech continues. God, this is just this is just <laughs> so boring. Um, okay, Brett was so focused on Mahmoud that he bumped into a smaller woman in front. Okay, he he bumps into Soledad, and he immediately recognizes by the way she has her hand in her purse that, that she she's has got her three D ha- printed gun. Yeah, that she's got a gun. He'd <laughs> seen that arm angle before. He knew what the person looked like before they pulled Man, the gun from concealment. <laughs> he is good at he's his good. job. I mean, I think it looks the same when you're pulling anything out of a purse, more or less. But okay, 
whatever. That's fine. Brett, he's a combat general. He knows these things. Um, he responds instinctively by yelling gun and grabbing her hand. Um, she fires uselessly into the air. The crowd panics. The Secret Service jumps on the president. They pull him off the stage. Um, then Brett gets jumped by the Secret Service. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Ellen had watched the proceedings above Air Force One. She watched the flustered anchors in the major network news try to get a beat on the story, giving out unverified information, then retracting it. She knew Ben had, Brett had no cell phone, so she had no one to call. Instead, she waited. So the president gets back on the plane. His motorcade arrives. Uh, he's angry at everybody, wondering how the security fucked up so bad and screwed up his big moment. He yells at Ellen about her goddamn husband. She says, my husband saved your life. Here's what I think. I think your husband showed up at that event because he's got a fixation with the imam, yada, yada, yada. Okay, where is this all heading? Um, So he argues with Ellen. Um, They're all on Air Force One. Um, She sees like people going through security as they get ready to take off to protect the president. She sees a man she didn't recognize who emerged with his bodyguard from the presidential motorcade. The bodyguard carried a large duffel bag. Next to him stood a Secret Service agent, the same guy who tackled Brett. Um, I think there's a, I think they're going to blow up Air Force One with a nuke. Um, yeah, I think that's about to happen. Um, so she doesn't, she recognizes the Imam Omari who's about to be on the plane with the president. They're all buckling in. The Imam is talking to his bodyguard in Arabic, which is obviously shady. The plane mm-hmm. takes off. Mm-hmm. Uh, the plane begins to drop. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh, good Lord. Okay. Then, oddly, the plane began to drop. The buildings in Manhattan grew nearer beneath the plane as Ellen watched curiously through the window. The voice of the pilot poured through the speakers. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be concerned. The president has requested that we descend to a lower level over the city of New York in order to take publicity photos. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, I guess they're taking plane publicity photos. Um Okay, so what the what? That's okay. one thing I really hate about liberals. <sighs> is their mm-hmm. their plane publicity photos? Yeah. Um, okay, so the president is having the plane fly low over New York, and at the same time, the Imam Omari starts chanting in Arabic. Um, I think it's it's his death chant because he's getting ready to do a terrorism. Um, and Ellen gradually figures out what's happening. Um, the plane circles lower and lower and lower. Uh, oh God. Okay. Uh, so it's the, uh, it's obvious that a 10 attack is about to happen because the Arab man is chanting in Arabic. The other passengers looked around uncomfortably paralyzed by a peculiar inability to overcome their political correctness. Oh, (laughs) I know Ellen isn't though. She's not, she's not overcome with political correctness. She unbuckles her seatbelt and walks towards Omari. Uh, but she gets cut off by one of his men and she shouts that he has a bomb. Secret Service agents appear. They pull their guns. Uh, Omari holds up his phone. Uh, he says he just wants to negotiate. The Secret Service agents freeze because Omari has been invited by the president. They think that it's been a mistake. Something could be worked out. Um, oh, God. From the floor of the airplane, Ellen looked up at Omari. He was lying. She could see it. He was stalling for time. No more time, Ellen thought to herself. No more talk. Negotiations. Games. A line from her past crept into her head for some reason. No loitering, cadet. She almost smiled as she remembered. Take a bullet for you, babe, she whispered to herself. Then she pushed herself. (laughs) (laughs) Your faces. Uh, If I was butchering a deer right now, I don't think you would look that disgusted. (laughs) No, and I'm a vegetarian. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. All right. Take yeah, yeah, a bullet yeah. for you, babe. She mm. So she to herself. She, she grabs Omari's phone, but it's not in enough time. Air Force One explodes at two thousand feet with a nuke, um, and blows up Washington Heights and a bunch of New York City. Um, damn. So yeah, it kills it kills a lot of people. Ben writes lovingly about this bomb destroying New York. Yeah, yeah. Obliterated full blocks of Washington Heights. Why specifically Washington Heights? Do we think? I don't know. Ben is clearly he spends a lot of time talking about New York getting nuked. I think he's he likes the idea. Um, he's like, That's what they deserve. Yeah. Well, because of their political correctness. That's why this happened. Um, no, I just think ki- it's interesting because that's where Cardi B's from. But it he kills a bunch Cardi of soldiers, B. too. Yeah, he that's probably it is Cardi B. He's he's this is all his yeah. revenge for that song about vaginas. Preemptive. Yeah. yeah I mean, th- these things did not happen in order, but I mean. Maybe the song is revenge for this book on behalf of all of us. We may never know. Yeah. So Brett doesn't see any of this because he's sitting in a cell when the bomb goes off. Uh, He turned to stare in the distance. He saw the mushroom cloud rise above the profile of the new Freedom Tower. Oh, no, he whispered. 
Oh God, please no. Then he fell to his knees and buried his head in his hands, screaming silently. All right, now we're at the epilogue. We're finally here. We have but, to take a break. Yeah, but first we, we do have, have to take, take a, break. a break. Yeah, I mean, you know who will also mm? Mm? destroy Air Force One? Yeah, when it's two thousand feet above New York City. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. These odds. Yes, they absolutely will. God. I, I love nukes. Huh? I love nukes. I can't stop thinking about how Brett should have just taken that goddamn kiss, yo. He should have taken the kiss, right? But he didn't want to be embarrassed in front of the White House chief of staff. He didn't want to be <laughs> slut shamed. He didn't want the White House chief of staff to know that he kissed his wife. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's disgusting behavior. Um, it is. It is. It says a lot about Ben that he was like, oh, people in this situation, knowing they're, one of them is about to die, would, wouldn't kiss because they wouldn't want the White House chief of staff to know that a married couple kisses. Yeah, they would hug politely. They would hug politely. In a way where like... leaving forever. (laughs) And from your perspective, as they hug, you could think like, oh, are they also kissing? Yeah. Um, Yeah. mm. It's, 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 I mean, it's just a emblematic of Ben's talent as an author. An auteur. (laughs) So, uh, the epilogue. Uh, I guess the... The former governor of Michigan is the acting president. She's addressing the country from the East Room of the White House. How'd that the tears happen? in her eyes were genuine. She po- forced them down. I know many of you may not know me. Few Americans bother to n- learn the name of the vice president of the United States. Oh. <laughs> I think most generally do. Oh, okay. So she's <laughs> the current vice president, yeah. not the current governor. Got no, it. okay. She was um, the former governor, current vice president, governor. which we haven't heard about since then, since now, uh, up until now, because most pre- Americans don't know who in, the vice president is. In this is. world, you don't run with a vice president on your ticket. That that doesn't happen. So people I don't also, know her. I also love that the vice president, now the acting president, after a nuke has been set off in America, opens her speech by saying, I know none of you know who I am because <laughs> I'm just the vice president. Um, very funny. By now, I'm sure you have heard the news from New York City, where our nation's greatest city has once again been struck by the scourge of terrorism. I'm also sure that you have heard that the president of the United States, Mark Prescott, was the target of that attack, along with hundreds of thousands of the citizens he loved so much. Her green eyes, hardened by years in the political limelight, glinted. She she had earned the lines around those eyes, the worry lines around her mouth. Allison Martin had fought her way to the top of American politics. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, we have some description of this person. Um, way too much of a description of this person's backstory for this moment in the book. Her speaking t- style was mechanical. She was unlikable. She did not. Oh, she's Hillary Clinton. OK. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> she did not have the charm of Mark, Mark Prescott. She did not inspire. She was as she, as she, she liked to no think of Bill herself Clinton. a grinder. Yes, she did not. She reminded her subordinates tolerate losing. I would give my own life to have preserved Mark Prescott's yada yada. He's a visionary leader. We will live for him. Okay, so she's talking about this president. Her voice rose in pitch and urgency and tenor. Mark Prescott was always honest with you, and I will be no less honest. Here is what we know tonight. We know that there was an assassination attempt on President Prescott today at New York Harbor. It was thwarted through diligent work of our security on the ground. We do have a man in custody. Shortly after the attempted attack on the president, the president's security team moved him to Air Force One, where he was accompanied aboard by media and political figures. Da da da. The White House has been in negotiation over the state of Texas, over... Why are we talking about Texas now? Why not? Um, yeah, okay, we're just going to Texas. Um, oh, okay. The repre- So they, she announces that Ellen Hawthorne is suspected of having smuggled and detonated a small ne- yield nuclear weapon aboard Air Force One. Um, and so America is now going to war with Texas. Oh, my uh, okay, God. That's that. <laughs> because what, 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 yeah. what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the, that's the Ellen- jump everyone takes. Who? Okay. Okay. It's called okay. freedom, folks. <laughs> yeah. We support it. This At is a time for Texas. unity, not disunity, and we must steel ourselves for the battle, battle ahead. There is also no question that America's capacity for rebuilding his building has been damaged. Uh, we've lost a lot of troops. Yada yada. The value of the dollar is fucked up. Uh, let me end tonight with a quote from President Mark Prescott, spoken just a few weeks ago at the site of the George Washington Bridge bombing. Love for each other, the president said. Care for each other. Sacrifice. Okay. Uh, okay, so we're going to war with... And now we're back to Levon. Okay, finally. Oh, Levon. Well, there's been really no resolution. Like, none of, none of what has happened with Levon has built to anything. 
Yeah. Um, okay, so he's talking, he's on a Skype call or something with the mayors of a bunch of other cities um, because he's been made emissary of peace. Um, okay. Um, so he's talking to the mayor of Detroit. Uh, we're at war. The war, and that war is down south, as you know. Some of the mayors nodded. A few looked uncomfortable. He pressed on. That means we've got to have order in our own cities. I know that you're all doing your best, best, but as you know, and as Mark Prescott said, police departments across this country have a long legacy of racial bigotry. With the current shortage of National Guard and federal military aid available, there's bound to be some unrest. Uh, he looks at the governor. So here's what needs to happen. And here's what President Martin wants to happen. You're all going to set up civilian oversight commissions. These will be parallel to your city councils and they'll have real authority, real public authority. If not, I can guarantee violence will happen. That's a guarantee. So his evil plan is to set up civilian oversight commissions over the police. Um, okay. Which is how he plans to control the country, I guess. Uh, yeah, they no longer ran, uh, the mayors no longer run their cities. Levon Williams did because all of the oversight commissions report to him, I guess, which is better than the cops running the cities, which is how things actually, anyway. Uh, oh, now we're at the South China Sea. The aircraft carrier sat moored to the man-made island atop the atolls of the Spratly Islands. The Chinese government had spent years dredging the coral reefs, turning them into military outposts in spite of international furor. The, cra- the crew of the Liaoning, fully 2,000 strong, had been trained aboard the ship and knew her well. They came accompanied by another 700 members of the air group. Behind the Liaoning sat a flotilla of destroyers and frigates. Okay, so we've got the Chinese military here. I guess they're about to do a Pearl Harbor. Um, so much violence in this book. Yeah. Uh, wait, nope, no, no, they're not. Um, they're not. Okay. Go okay. They're just, they, 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 there's just the Chinese military is about to meet a bunch of forces from the coalition. Cause they're doing, uh, some sort of, um, oh, they're sending the Chinese army is heading to America to help with the rebuild building, but really to occupy oh. the country. Okay. Okay. Because Hillary Clinton has asked this the Chinese out. military to occupy the country and help go to war with Texas. So fucking okay. Wait, so China's okay. helping us go to war with Texas now. Yes, yes. That's th- cool. That's what's happening. That uh, makes sense. And we end on Austin. Well, I don't know if we're ending yet, but we're at 99%. So now we're in Austin, Texas. The impeachment vote against Governor Bubba Davis is underway. He's in his office, the room dark. He's thinking about Ellen. Uh, there's no way that... Th- He'd watched the speech from President Martin, disbelieving there was no way that the federal government, even this federal government, could actually believe Ellen Hawthorne responsible for the worst terror attack in the history of the United States, could believe him responsible for that attack. But they had said it. They declared war. His bluff had been called, unless he wasn't bluffing. Davis knew that governors all over the country were waiting, waited, watching to see what the House would do today. He'd spoken with the governors of Mississippi. OK, so he'd spoke with the governors of all of the southern states, um, all of the good states, all of the red states. He's all talking the good with. old boys. Yeah, and he'd assured them that he had nothing to do with the attack. Okay, I see what Ben's setting up here. The federal military, yada, 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 yada. Uh, The thought thought of American men and women aiming guns at each other made Bubba Davis sick to his stomach. He'd hoped, in a way, that the House would go through with it, remove him from office, put it into all this. Um, Da, 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 da. This okay, is so, so he dumb. he doesn't get impeached. Uh, he knew soon that he will be at war with the federal government. So that's mm-hmm. that's where we're going. We're going to have another uh, split between red and blue states and China fighting for the blue states. Yeah, great. So we do have a sequel in the works. We uh, well, I don't think Ben's going to write the actual sequel, <laughs> but I think he and I think his hope was that this would have been a huge hit. And he would write a series and it would be made into a blockbuster movie that it's- would convince everyone that liberals are evil. It's so embarrassing when there's a bad book that's and clearly Muslims. setting itself up to have legs. Mm-hmm. You're like, no, bro, you barely made it through this. <laughs> you barely made it through this, and it's not coherent. So, okay, I, I, I correct. The last part we end on is New York City. Brett Hawthorne is in an empty warehouse that the government's put him in because he's too high profile. He's sad about Ellen. Um, okay, a, a guy, an officer in full SWAT regalia walks into the room. He was tall, broad-shouldered, which means he's a good guy. Piece by piece, he began undressing. <laughs> That's right, it does. <laughs> there isn't much time, sir. You need to put this shit on. Brett looked at him. What are you talking about? You're leaving, General. How did you get in here? You want to stick around here? That's up to you, General, said the officer. But I have a feeling you'd be better off taking my advice. Brett stood up and began putting on the police gears. The officer spoke. General, you're going to walk out of here. Keep your face toward the wall as much as possible. Show them this ID. It's federal. Brett looked at it. EPA? What do they have to do with this? The officer laughed. This ID serves a purpose. Used to belong to a friend of mine. When Brett finished suiting up, the officer sat down with his back against the wall. Only one of us can leave, he said. I think this is Ricky Sullivan. So Sullivan's giving himself up so that Brett can escape. Um... Uh, 
So Brett escapes while Ricky takes his place in the the black site. Uh, he gets into the car and he sees Soledad Ramirez there. He like yells at her because the last time he saw her, she was trying to kill the president. Um, you tried to assassinate Prescott. What do you want with me? Soledad took looked at him seriously. Do you want to stick around? If so, get out right now. Brett looked at her. You're that terrorist. I prefer rancher. The government made me a terrorist. No, said Brett. You made you into a terrorist. You're free to get out at any time. Brett went silent. She started the engine. For what it's worth, she said, looking straight ahead, I'm sorry about your wife, General Hawthorne. I'm sorry for this country. I'm not sorry what happened to Prescott. None of that matters. Where are we going? I figure you're the general. You pick. Brett thought for a moment. Then he looked to the horizon again, to the murky cloud of ash blotting out the rising stars. He set his jaw in a look Ellen would have recognized me instantly as unshakable determination. Let's head, let's head west, he said. I'm going home. But wait a second. They're in, like, the northeast. West isn't from the northeast, isn't Texas. Yeah. South. Okay. Also, Beautiful, Ben. West Beautiful. from the wait northeast is like Canada. Yeah. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> like, Why depending was on the... exactly where. Yeah. Like... yeah. Are you in Oregon? What are you okay. doing? Like, yeah. Wait. Why is there still smoke? Well, because there was weeks. a nuke. Yeah, yeah but, but it's... I mean. I, I don't know. We don't know. We don't know how long it's been because Ben never tells us. Fair. That's um, fair. I'll give it that. There'd probably be smoke for a while after a nuke was detonated over I New York City. Hate this book so much. <laughs> I just am so it's, glad it's, it's over. It's terrible, but it is over. It is over. Ben Shapiro's stand-in character is looking west from New York towards Westward. Texas, which is south. Um, mm -hmm. in a perfect sign of everything that this book is. I mean, you know, everybody's got their different opinions. Uh, this person, uh says Ben Shapiro sure can write. I didn't expect him to write fiction, but I couldn't put the book down. Unfortunately, the events described in the book are possible. So ah. straight from the recent news. I hope what's described here will never become reality waiting for the sequel. So, you know, yes, maybe, who can maybe it's actually great. That time. We should see what other, <laughs> what other reviews that writer left. I love it out. Yeah. <laughs> ripped ripped from the headlines. Who can forget the time White Obama was killed by a nuke and Hillary yeah. Clinton mm -hmm. invaded Texas with China? Yeah, with China. It's yeah, just exactly. so accurate. It's eerie. Yeah, straight from really. the headlines. Straight from the headlines. Boy, oh Ben, I am glad uh, it's over. It's funny because the thing that is made clear over and over in this book, from Ben's basic lack of understanding of firearms to his basic <laughs> lack of understanding of the military to his basic lack of understanding of emergency response to his basic lack of understanding of love and like um, good writing he's he's a man who's never done anything but write shitty political screeds like mm -hmm. he's he's just he's just since he was a teenager written bad columns about politics he has no life experience he's never been anywhere or done anything but been like a rich kid who argues with people on camera. Um, and it's clear because he can't write about anything. Yeah. You have to. And, have like, yeah. and when his characters speak or uh, anything's narrated, it sounds like that. It sounds like he's just doing his little, his, uh, yeah, his uh, town hall columns or whatever. Yeah. About how civilian it's... casualties are good. <laughs> yeah, they're fine. We should bomb. He's angry because the president wants to bomb Syria, but we should have been bombing Iran. Um, oh man. Yeah. You know, the thing, the thing about it is the thing about it is you don't have to have had a lot of, you don't have to have had life experience about something to write about it, but you have to have had life experience to write. Like, <laughs> you, you, you have to have like, like experienced things in the world to write well. And Ben is not. And that's made very clear by the book, true allegiance. Yeah. Yeah. Also, just like, yeah, I think there's a, this is a larger issue worth unpacking in the future and many other mediums. But like, yeah, uh, it's just like you, if you don't really understand or appreciate <sighs> art, then you can't make it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's an interesting. Yeah. It just feels like, yes, he's got a vocabulary. It feels like a very simplistic and naive and childlike vision of what is possible in a, you know yeah. or not not even possible none of it's possible things but like it's just it's just immature it feels like a kid wrote it except with a thesaurus you know yeah 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 I mean, it's, it's one of those things where i i sus with a good piece of fiction as a general rule especially if you yourself 
read a lot and have read some of the same things that like the author of the fit, which if you really like a book, you probably read some of the same things the author of that book read. That's just kind of the way creativity works. You can often tell with a really good book, oh, I'm going to guess this was a little bit of an inspiration or this was a little bit of an inspiration. You can kind of see, like, even if you're not really super familiar, like with Tolkien, you know, like, oh, this is a guy who spent his entire life reading like different sort of like old English myths. And that's that's what he's bringing into this book. Um, you can tell that sort of thing because good g- good writers steal. You know, that's how it works. Yeah. You, yeah. Well, you, they, find... well, you can call it stealing or just reading, right? Yeah, like, reading, yes. Like, yeah. Influence, yeah. learn from, <laughs> yeah, absorbing. The, 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 like... the phrase is good writers borrow, great writers steal, right? You know, yeah, like, yeah. but you can you can see like, oh, I can see what inspired you. I can see what mm-hmm. your influences were. That's usually, that's one of the joys of reading. Um, I don't know what inspired Ben in terms of fiction. I know what. Well, I don't believe he reads. Opinion. I don't. Yeah, I don't believe he reads. There's no sign of it in this book. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's just like 24 stuff, right? Like, I, yeah. there's a direct yeah, reference exactly. to that, but it's that stuff. It's just like this. Um, it like feels the, look, very look, 24. Yeah. Look he at reads, the cover of the book. He reads the like. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. It's just <laughs> he reads the scripts for for things. That's it. Yeah, and like, like look at the yeah the cover. Even it's like <laughs> it reminds you of like a book you'd see at the airport. Yeah, right. it yeah. does. Which is, um, I mean, the cover design isn't bad. It's a good cover if you're trying to get people to buy a book at an airport. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. It's, exactly. Like, it's, and it's the like, single like, most competent thing about this book is right. the cover. Yeah. Um, and like, you know, book by its cover, all that kind of stuff. But like, yeah. it's like, it, it's just this, uh, it's chasing an aesthetic and that's it. Yes. Um, there's no like substance. It's just like, I want it to be like this kind of thing with like the flag and like the military and there's yeah. going to be like, you know, it's just like, this general idea of like what it should should kind of feel like, but even th- I feel like the word "feel" is a little too generous here. Yeah, <laughs> um, and you can tell like it's it's very clear that he wrote this because like like he wrote this imagining those scenes in twenty four where you've got like the timers ticking down and like okay we got to do this and we got to find the terrorist here and this here and like everything's like you know this attack is is happening we're seeing the people moving around the area that's about to get bombed and like th- this this whole like it's it's scripted. It, it, it's written. I can tell it's written by somebody who wanted this to be turned into a movie or a TV show mm-hmm. because it, it it's it, that's the way it's 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 plotted. Organi- it's not. It's, it's, plotted it's not, it's not yeah. written like that. It's organized like that. It's like oh, and then you know a better writer and like a director and actors will like inject feeling and suspense into this. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, which is a sure sign it's a bad book. Yeah, because. Uh, writing for it to be a franchise versus writing a story. I mean, look, I don't even under. There's nothing to unpack here. It sucks. Like, <laughs> right. there's no like eloquent argument to be made. It's just fucking bad. Yeah, it's just bad. It's um, just a terrible. It's terrible. Yeah, it's 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 but very what close fun to we unreadable. Had. <laughs> but we've we've learned a lot together about about how not to write a fiction novel, and we've learned yes. even more. Most of all, we've learned about Ben Shapiro. Yes. A look at that him is... with l- little psyche. Yeah. Loves a comma. Yeah. yeah. Lo- so, the, man lo- the man loves a comma. The man uh, loves a comma. Hates kissing the, uh, his wife, loves a comma. I, uh, it is interesting seeing um, the reviews are sort of along those lines, even of like, I'm a, I'm a fan of Ben Shapiro. But this is not a good or interesting book. There are a lot of yeah. Yeah. it is not. Yes. It's not exciting. It's poorly written. The characters are pretty stilted. Like it's it's they're you know they're very honest. Yeah, um, someone with, should have been this honest with him when he was thinking about publishing a book. If he had a single person in his life who loved him, um, they would have put a hand on his shoulder and said, "No, Ben. Ben, you're a millionaire." You're you're influential on the right wing. You you uh, political leaders within your party have to get your you know it, they have to come and talk to you. Like you've you're you're very successful by the standards with with, with which you judge success. This is not for you. This will only hurt you. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is not for you. You don't get to do this because you're oh, bad at it. Oh, but he does. I'm hoping because they're doing movies. And yeah, TV they're doing and movies now. Yeah. Uh, I. Hope that he writes at least he, one of them, right? Oh, it'll like, be, he de- he, no, he he's will, probably yes. demanding that he will. He's, I'm sure um, that's, that's the, the entire point. reason he's. They're doing also it. apparently uh, 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 making uh, a music label. Oh um, my god! You know, oh, so are we they, finally gonna hear Ben Shapiro's rap album? Yeah. Is he gonna yeah, drop a fucking EP? 
The Daily I, Wire presents music. Oh yeah. God. None of this is none of this is sitting well with me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm. I, I know they've released that one movie about the school shooting. I don't think Ben wrote it. I'm fairly no, no, no. certain. No, no, that movie it. was made, and yeah, the Daily Wire was like, we'll buy, it. we'll buy that, and we'll release it under our subscription. Yeah, model. and, um, and what they haven't se- released anything that was written by the team yet. What it seems like the reason it seems like they did that because like they like they have money, but they don't have movie making money. So what they need to do is get a movie someone else made, buy it, have a, a success that makes a profit so they can get funding to do something. And then do their own thing, exactly. And, and like just legitimize themselves uh, yes. off the bat with like, oh, it's a real movie that was made, not yeah. like Ben like writing Truest Allegiance or whatever. And I, I don't know, I'm sure Ben will get to have his hands in the pudding at some point. I don't know that they'll ever be successful enough for him to get to write a screenplay. Because number one, this is unfilmable. Um, <laughs> you could film you could film a version of it that would probably be better than the book if you had hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, but you don't. But like, you don't. Yeah. You you his his studio is years away from having the money to film in downtown New York City, let alone right, right. have nukes and tens of thousands of soldiers and go from Afghanistan. I mean, you could film yeah, a lot no, of Afghanistan stuff be, in California, like, but still. Yeah, yeah. It, it'll have to be like a very uh, contained sort of uh, yes. thing to, yes. film, to film originally. Yeah, um, like his screenplay about being in law school. Um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, his dramedy. His dramedy. Um, I'm glad we're done. Huh. I am too. On to the next. Same. Yeah, we'll find another book. Hit us up online. Tell us what you want us to read but it'll probably be the way of the shadow wolves. Um, <laughs> Robert's like, give me suggestions. I won't listen, but go ahead. <laughs> I might. I might listen. I listen all the time. Yeah, there's some probably sure you do. bad books. Mm-hmm. Out there. He'll at yeah. least read them. Yeah, I'll at least, I'll at least read people's Your read suggestions. suggestions exactly. Not the book. Not the oh, book. No. Oh, Katie, no. Cody, do you have any pluggables for us? Always. Just check out our shit, yo. Yeah, check yeah. out their shit. Online. Oh, Katie, that was so cool. <laughs> You guys know where we are at some more news on yeah. Twitter. At us. this point, you that was so into cool. this. Yeah, you've got to. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. You know the things. Go on. Mm-hmm. I'm, do fr- it. I'm friends with her. She's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the end of the podcast. Uh, take a yeah. bullet for you, babe. Take a take bullet, a bullet for, you, for babe. you, babe. Maybe that should be new merch. I don't know. We'll think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Robert Evans here. Just before you go, uh, I know we've just spent a bunch of time talking about a terrible novel, but I wrote a novel, too, uh, and it's either terrible or not terrible, depending on your opinion. But you can find it at atrbook.com. That's where the the text will be. It'll be both readable online and in an EPUB. Every week, we'll publish another three chapters as an EPUB. Uh, And also every week, we're going to be publishing three chapters, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, on uh, the podcast After the Revolution. So if you just go look up After the Revolution, wherever you find podcasts, you can find me reading my new novel. So atrbook.com and After the Revolution podcast, check it out. <laughs>